If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question before listening on. So in black we have a long straight wire that has a fixed negative charge. We've denoted the linear charge density of that wire here. And then it is coaxial with a thin-walled non-conducting cylindrical shell whose radius is 1.5 centimeters. And we've denoted the linear charge density of the shell as lambda with a prime symbol. Now because both the wire and the cylinder are charged, they're both going to be producing electric fields. And we know that the net electric field would be the sum of the electric field produced by the wire and that produced by the cylinder. Now it turns out that for lines of charge with uniform charge density, the electric field produced by that line of charge is given by the following expression. So we have that expression set up for both the wire and the cylinder. Notice that we've included a negative sign in front of the electric field produced by the wire because the wire has a fixed negative charge as stated in the question. Now it turns out that our next step is to establish a relationship between the surface charge density of the cylinder and its linear charge density. And to see that relationship we can begin by noting that the total amount of charge would equal a linear charge density multiplied by a length. Hopefully that makes sense because a linear charge density has the units of coulombs per meter and length has a unit of meters. So if we multiplied those two quantities together the meters would cancel and we would get coulombs which is the charge. So we can see that the amount of charge is related to the linear charge density by the following equation. But it also turns out that the amount of charge can equal the surface charge density multiplied by area. Surface charge density has a unit of coulombs per meter squared. Area has a unit of meters squared. Once again, those units would cancel giving us a unit of coulombs to represent the total charge. Now the surface area of a cylinder is represented by 2 pi r multiplied by its length. So we can substitute that expression in for the area. Now the amount of charge in terms of a linear charge density must be equal to the amount of charge in terms of a surface charge density. So we can set these two expressions equal to one another. We could cancel the factor of L that appears on both sides of the equation. We could then see that for a cylinder the linear charge density is related to the surface charge density by the following equation. So what we'll do is we'll substitute this expression for the linear charge density of the cylinder into the expression that we had developed for the electric field of the cylinder. Now the question notes that the net external electric field is going to equal zero, so we can set the sum of these two electric fields equal to zero and attempt to solve for sigma. And why don't we go ahead and add this term over to the left hand side. We can then see that both sides of the equation contain the factor 2 pi epsilon lowercase r, so we can cancel it from both sides. And then finally we'll divide both sides by 2 pi capital R to isolate sigma. And then we can plug in the known values. Notice that the radius has to be converted into meters by multiplying it by 10 to the minus 2. And then the nanocoulombs per meter has to be multiplied by 10 to the minus 9. Once we plug in the known values we can see that sigma turns out to be 3.8 times 10 to the negative 8th coulombs per meter squared. And that is indeed the final answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You're welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.